Ben said, my name's Caleb. First of all, I'd like to thank Ben and all the lecturers for giving me the opportunity to speak as valedictorian for this year. As a student at the AA, I just wanted to share my personal experiences from this year and what it was like for me and the other students. Our group certainly has a lot of interesting first impressions. In fact, I would say that everyone's first impressions of each other were hopelessly off and not one person could have guessed what anyone would be like first term. <laughs> Joey was given the nickname of the Bogan first term. <laughs> and whilst he certainly did live up to that with his Jazza McBazza barbecue performances <laughs> later on in the year, I think we all underestimated what a talented and thoughtful person he turned out to be. My nickname that term was Sherman, <laughs> which I still have mixed feelings about. <laughs> Um, Patrick has been given the nickname of Scotty ever since he fooled everyone with his Scottish impression in Oak Week. And Julia and Pannon had a reputation for being absolutely terrifying. <laughs> so, needless to say, none of this turned out to be true. Except for possibly Julia. <laughs> Getting to know everyone in the first term was characterised by a few things. Like swing dancing most nights and having an excessively large amount of people hanging in the loft. In the first term, the people from Perth tended to cling to each other like limpets, <laughs> and so we gave them all the nickname of the Perthians. <laughs> Not to worry, they all eventually became friends with the rest of us. <laughs> first term was where we learned about ancient history, literature and philosophy, and the classes with Eliza were where I had my first introduction to philosophy as a subject. I remember after most philosophy classes in first term, we used to have heated debates over morning tea about whether you were a Platonist or Aristotelian, <laughs> among many other things. First term was also where I learned about my love for philosophy and how much I wanted to keep studying liberal arts even after the year was over. Eliza gave most of us, in fact, a love for philosophy we never knew we had, and I'm gonna miss her giving philosophy lectures. Ben also gave a lot of interesting literature and history lectures in that term. And I remember James was particularly good at giving exact dates and numbers, <laughs> leaving Ben to defer to him where he couldn't remember the exact date. <laughs> First term was also the only one where the cohort had regularly scheduled talent nights, <laughs> where we were introduced to talents like Aiden on the cello, Elijah on the guitar, and Joey's multitude of talents, including, but not limited to, <laughs> considerable acting prowess, Mongolian throat singing, <laughs> and traditional Russian Kazakh dancing. <laughs> Towards the end of the term, we also went to Jindabyne for a few days, a tradition that I hope will continue in future years. Over the year, I've always looked forward to the chance to experience walks, snow, proper heating, and church hall for Jindabyne. <laughs> Arriving at the campus second term, I was struck by how amazing the campus looked. The area was covered in autumn leaves, and Ben had just completed his new second boys' dorm out of the old toilet building. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with carpet and space for bags, this dorm was an early experience of heaven for the boys lucky enough to stay there. <laughs> Joey, Bratham, Scotty, and myself. Second term was a fantastic chance for me to get closer to the other three in the dorm, and I'm really grateful for the friendships I formed over conversations and many, many arguments that took place there. <laughs> Second term was a chance for the cohort to recover from all of the first impressions we all suffered from and get to know each other on a deeper level. The girls began to take early morning swims in the river. I'm still not sure why. <laughs> Ratham also took off his hat for the first time. <laughs> and inevitably, as a result, he was very popular among the women. <laughs> He also began to show off his guitar talents, which undoubtedly contributed to the situation. <laughs> Most of the group in second term got obsessed with the pegging game, where we tried to sneak a clothes peg onto someone's clothes and see if it could remain there for five minutes. Second term in Gender Mind was when many of the students saw snow for the first time, when we went on a hike up Charlotte's Pass. I wrecked my jacket on that hike when Isaiah decided that it would be a great idea to slide face first down a snow-covered mountain and we all followed him. <laughs> Melting snow and a down jacket doesn't mix well, as it turns out. We also had an introduction to ballroom dancing with the second term formal, where a casual joke by Ben about asking a girl out to formal turned into a frenzy of trying to secure a date with at least twice as many boys as girls. <laughs> Second term ended with a dire warning from Ben about the Siberian conditions winter would bring. 
and a Babylonian exile of sorts for the lazy game, myself free of enjoy from the small dorm. <laughs> we had utterly failed to clean the dorm at the end of the term. <laughs> <laughs> the watch of resident mouse we called Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's warnings for third term were deserved. As predicted, the academy was shockingly cold for third term, and a number of us took to wearing blankets from day to day as we tried to deal with the class in the cold. Class was moved back an hour, and the girls migrated to the main house as the boys took over their dorm. <laughs> the first main boys' dorm had been flooded, and due to this, was completely unlivable. Eliza's lectures on existentialist philosophy resulted in a collective existential crisis <laughs> and this room pervaded the cohort for most of the term. <laughs> One bright spot in term three was Mitchell's lectures, which gave half the students an ambition to pursue psychology in the future. Another good aspect of the term was Isaiah, Scotty and I finally giving up on our absolutely horrible efforts of pranking the group. <laughs> Um, I think I can say with confidence that this year will be the worst year in Academy history for pranks, <laughs> as no one pulled a decent prank all year. Amen. <laughs> the best prank the group achieved was when Anae, Grace and Hope put chickens in the small boys' dorm. <laughs> it's safe to say the bar is pretty low next year. <laughs> the lectures pitted the boys against the girls in turn three with a cook-off, and the girls gave a mafia-themed Italian night fully in character. To be fair, the boys could never top that, but we gave it a try with an 80s themed club murder mystery. Liam solved my murder with brilliant detective work resulting in Mary's homicide conviction. <laughs> Grace, Hope and Clem were unable to make it to this term and we all missed them a lot throughout the rest of the year. Shout out to them for making terms one and two awesome. Mm. The last term was characterized by preparation for drama, a lot of fun events, and Joey and Brendan opening a questionable French toaster <laughs> <laughs> selling Academy products <laughs> to students for a price. <laughs> I don't know why anyone bought that. <laughs> the group consumed a huge number of energy drinks this term, and we all had our hands full with exam prep and the majors having to be, on, be done in a shorter time frame. <laughs> Mary ignited a slavery debate, which made history classes interesting for the rest of the world. <laughs> Breakham got an electric guitar, and Abby plugged in her ukulele to his amp and turned up the distortion, <laughs> which thankfully only happened once. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of the students and lecturers for making this year one of the best of my life. Augusta Academy has taught me to think critically, and the friends that I've made here I hope will last me a lifetime.